Welcome to this, the online Christmas Eve service for Shelby Presbyterian Church. So good to have you all tuning in today. A few announcements before we begin. If you do not yet have your bulletin uh, printed out and before you, we invite you to pause this at this time. Print out your bulletin and, uh, and come back also. Uh, if you will uh, get something to eat and drink for communion uh, and if you have a small candle uh, to light and hold during our singing of Silent Night, I would invite all of you to get one of those as well. For those of you who are wanting to give to the church before the end of the year, uh, just make sure that your uh, donation uh, is uh, handed in uh, by December 31st if you want credit for it for this year. There will be no in-person outdoor worship at the pavilion on December 27th or January 3rd. We hope to reconvene on January 10th, uh, depending on the weather. Those are the announcements that I have for today. Let us begin our worship with the lighting of the Advent candles which will be done by the Borders family. We have watched, we have waited, and hoped For peace, enjoy, with love, now our redemption draws near. Hear the word of the Lord from Isaiah 9, um, chapters 2 through 7. Here, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as, the, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son is given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. Prince of Peace, his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it, uphold it with just, and uphold it with righteousness and justice. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia and Amen.
Let us pray. Glorious God, on this Christmas Eve, we sing beloved carols of Bethlehem, of shepherds and angels, of Mary and Joseph, and the infant Jesus, our Savior. Is there yet a new song we can sing to you? A song to be learned from the heavens and the earth, where the roar of the sea, the exultation of the fields, and the joy of the trees are already raised in a chorus of glad rejoicing, ready to welcome you. Even if no ear may hear your coming, help us hear the music of creation. Then with the whole cosmos, we will sing of your salvation, declare your glory, and in a crescendo of praise, bless your name, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 115, Away in a Manger. Let us sing together. Thank <laughs>
said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, do you know what I know? In your palace for mighty king, do you know what I know? A child Said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say, pray for peace people everywhere, listen to what I say, the child, the child, sleeping in Here now the Gospel lectionary reading assigned for today, Christmas Eve. Luke chapter 1, or chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on, on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God 
for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this Christmas Eve, I have chosen to focus our attention on the words of the angel to the shepherds in verses 10 and 11 of the second chapter of Luke, which is as good a summary as any of the good news message on Christmas Eve. The message from the angel was this. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Let me look with you 
at the different elements of this good news message. Do not be afraid. The story tells us that the angel appeared to the shepherds at night. Angels are understood in the Bible primarily as divine messengers, those who have a word of God to share with human beings. The story says that the angel was radiating the glory or light of God, and that light was terrifying to the shepherds. So the first word of the angel was one meant to calm their fears, to put them at ease. When we are too afraid in the moment, we can't hear the message, even the good news message being spoken to us. So the first move on the angel's part is to get the shepherds ready to hear the good news. Then the angel continues, I am bringing you good news. The shepherds do not need to be afraid because the angel brings them good news of God's salvation, not the bad news of God's judgment. The Greek word translated good news is often translated into English as gospel. Gospel means good news. The coming of Christ into the world is good news. The angel continues, I am bringing you good news of a great joy. The angel comes to bring the opposite of the great fear the shepherds feel initially, and that's great joy, which is that immensely positive and permanent feeling you have when you know beyond doubt that you are in God's safe and secure hands and that your present and your future is secure in God. The angel continues, I'm bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. The angel tells the shepherds that the Christ who has been born is good news of great joy for everyone, not just for the top 1%. Or just for the poorest of the poor. Not just for half the people. Not just for Jews. Not just for Gentiles. Not just for men. Not just for women. Not just for old. Not just for young. Not just for brown-skinned people. Or just for white-skinned people. Not just for religious people. Not just for non-religious people. For all people. Including the shepherds that night who were often left out of things in their society. The angel continues, To you is born this day in the city of David. In the Greek in which Luke writes his gospel, you is emphatically plural, meaning Christ is born to you, shepherds, and to everyone else. In the city of David, which is Bethlehem, and almost every Jew of Jesus' time would know that God's Messiah was expected to come out of Bethlehem and would come out of King David's royal line. The angel continues, To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. The angel bestows three titles on the Christ who has been born, Savior, Messiah and Lord. In the New Testament, Savior is understood as someone who saves us from peril in all aspects of life in the present and in the future, and especially saves us from sin and death. We can't save ourselves, so God saved us in the coming of Christ. Interestingly, Savior was a title given to the Roman emperors of Jesus' time. And the angel on that night gave it instead to Christ. Messiah is actually translated from the Greek word Christos, or Christ, meaning the anointed one, God's long-promised, long-awaited king. And Lord in the Greek is kurios, 
and refers to one with all power and authority. Again, Lord was also a title conferred on the Roman emperors of Jesus' time, but the angels on that night gave that title to Christ instead. That's the good news on Christmas Eve, that the one born in such humble circumstances, born out of town, born outside the crowded inn, and laid in a manger with lowly shepherds as the first witnesses was and still is the Savior of the world, God's King, who is given by God all power and authority. Amen. come now to the Lord's table and it is always uh, it always feels odd on Christmas Eve to be celebrating communion on this night we celebrate the birth of Jesus why are we racing ahead to the remembrance and celebration of his death and resurrection well 
uh, tonight as a reminder that it, it wasn't just the birth of Christ uh, that is significant for us as Christians, but all the things that that birth led to, including Christ's perfect life in obedience to God, his death on the cross and his willingness to go there, his resurrection and ascension in, into heaven. It's all of one piece, the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. And so it is completely appropriate that on this night that we celebrate Jesus' birth, we also celebrate his obedient life, even unto death on the you are all invited uh, to participate in the Lord's table at home. And um, let us pray before we do that. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O holy God, creator and ruler of the universe. You created light out of our darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and called us to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful and turned from your ways, you did not forsake us. Your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and sent prophets to call us back to your way. In the fullness of time, you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. In him, your word dwelling with you from all eternity became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth, and we beheld your glory, Emmanuel. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Born in humility, he came to rule over all. Helpless as an infant, he showed the power of your love. Poor in things of the world, he brought the wealth of your grace. Rejected by many, he welcomed all who sought him. In his dying and rising, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by, your, by water and the Spirit. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take now from your creation this bread and this cup and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you, to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ, in the world. Now hear us, O Lord, as we pray all together the prayer given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night on which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples with these words, Take Eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup and giving it to his disciples, said to them, this is my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink it as often as you do it in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul reminds us that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Sisters and brothers, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. You are invited by Christ right now to eat 
and drink the body and blood of Christ. And once you've done that, join us in the singing of Silent Night, and if you're able, light your candle and show it forth. until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm through Christ with Christ in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor are yours almighty God now and forever amen <laughs> Yes, it is for peace. 
Christmas Eve with the singing of Joy to the World, number 134. encompass us and the Holy Spirit encourage us as we wait in hope for Christ to come again.